Um, so today's event is titled Curator's Dialogue, Intersectionality Through Creative Practice. Um, this event is hosted by Easy Contemporary. My name is Dot Jia. I work as the Associate Curator at Easy Contemporary, and we are UK's only nonprofit art centre specialising in presenting and platforming artists and art practices that identify with and are informed by East and Southeast Asian cultural backgrounds. Um, so today we are delighted to have our guest curator, Hanu Zhang, who is the curator of our current exhibition, Practice Till We Meet. And then we also have two guests, Anna Hashani and Shitol Prajapati. Sorry. Um, they're the co-curator of the project series, Progressive Diasporas, um, which explores the experiences and intersections of immigrant diasporas through a set of collaboratively collaboratively developed, cumulatively experienced and um, events. So um, please enjoy the conversations and discussions and feel free to leave any questions you may have in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Dot. Um, uh, I'm very happy today to welcome two of my fellow curators here with us, uh, Anna and Shito. They both live in the US, Anna is in New York, and Shito, I believe, is based in Santa Fe. Um, the two of them formed a curatorial initiative, as Dot mentioned, called Progressive Diaspora, which they will give an extensive introduction later. But let me first introduce each of them a little bit. Anna, Anna is an old friend. I know Anna almost 10 years ago. We did a project together with the nonprofit art organization, No Longer Empty. So the two of us and the four other curators put together a show about exchanges and community engagement in a space that is, for, that is a former Chinatown hair salon. Anna has done curatorial practices in New York, St. Petersburg, Seoul, uh, Timisoara, and Fluj, Romania, uh, and using her own words, presenting art in non-art contexts. Anna has also worked at or worked with institutions such as uh, the Museum of Modern Art, the New School, A Blade of Grass, and the Guggenheim Museum. She is currently assistant curator of community engagement at Creative Time. And Shito has many roles. She is a curator, she is an educator, artist, advisor. Uh, she has spent many years working with art institutions such as the Museum of Modern Art, Pioneer Works, New York, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, and the Block Museum of Art in Illinois. Shito has taught in multiple schools, including the School of Visual Arts, New York. Shito served as the executive director of Common Field from 2012, uh, 2021 to 22. Right now, she is leading LOHA projects, which provides consulting services to cultural organizations in fields such as public engagement, collaboration, artist center initiatives, and organizational vision and change work. So today, um, Anna and Shito will tell us all about Progressive Diaspora. Um, they will uh, do a presentation around uh, 40, 45 to 50 minutes um, about how they started it, what are the ideas and methodologies behind it, and um, their first curatorial iteration last year. And after that, um, they will show, um, they will open the conversation to um, our audience and participants today. Um, the two of them will lead a discussion surrounding some key concepts around the practice of prog progressive diaspora and but also like around the discourse of immigrant diaspora in general. So um, in the exhibition Practice Till We Meet, currently on view at Easy Contemporary, one of my intentions is to include discussions about migration and diasporic experience from a diversity of contexts. Both Shito and Anna also come from families of immigrants and they dedicated themselves to exploring what is progressive diaspora in the context of American society and beyond. So having them today is very imp important and meaningful to, to this project. Um, so without further ado, um, please join me to welcome progressive diaspora.
Thank you, Hanlu. Um, she told you, you wanna go first, actually. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you, Hanlu. Thank you um, to um, Essa Contemporary. It's really nice to be here. So Anna and I are gonna talk about this project under the kind of framework of intersectionality and how that has played into this project particularly, but also our own working relationship. Um, it speaks to the artists we choose and the way that we approach our curatorial work together. So as was mentioned, I have a lot of roles in terms of the work that I do professionally. And in terms of my curatorial practice, which is really a very small part of what I do, um, that work has always been shaped by my work as an educator in the field, um, doing public programming, working with audiences of all ages, and really thinking deeply about the relationship between people and creativity, people and objects, people and ideas. That's always been my entry point into the arts as an executive director, as a consultant. That's kind of my grounding space for the work that I do. And so our curatorial practice has been for me very much a way to explore those ideas through the framework of curating, through inviting artists in, working with Anna as a collaborator. Um, and Anna will talk a little bit about her background, but I think I can say for the both of us, that connecting point as an educator or coming from a pedagogical space is really important for us in terms of the work that we do. Um, I'm going to let Anna talk a little bit about herself and she's going to introduce the project a little bit and then I will talk a little bit more about the artist and Anna would you talk a little bit about like us and our kind of long term work together as well. Um, I'm going to switch to sharing my screen as Anna is talking. Um, so if anybody has trouble seeing what's on the screen, please just send me a message and, and we'll, uh, we'll work it out. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess um, just about me, a little bit about my background and something that I share with Chitil is like I also have um, a background in um, education. So I uh, have worked in like museum education and um, also in, in, in like higher ed. Um, and so I'm really interested in like pedagogical models when it comes to um, curatorial work and like the exhibition as like a space of learning. Um, and I'm I'm also um, someone who's worked not just in the arts, but I've also worked in like the restaurant industry, um, in like domestic work. And so I've always been interested in how um, these different forms of labor kind of like intersect with art. And um, so I think that's what's kind of drawn me to working with artists kind of beyond like a traditional exhibition format or framework. And so, um, you know, also like learning from Sheetal's practice and like what she's done um, in her work has been like very illuminating for me and like a really great learning experience. So um, yeah, I think it's it's great to have this collaboration, which we'll talk more about um, and kind of like projects we've done in the past, because I think a lot of our kind of approaches and like personal experiences co collide in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, I can talk about game night now, I guess. Um, oh, wait, Anna, you but, know what I realized? Uh -huh. We should yeah. both share a little bit about our personal diasporas. Oh, right, yeah. So, Why don't you share yours? Yeah. I'll share mine and then I'll switch to uh, slides. Yes, so I was born in Romania in Timisoara, um, but my family moved here when I was um, four. So I moved here to the US with my parents. Um, and um, I'm, my last name is actually Hungarian. So my father is like from like the Hungarian community in Romania. So I have this kind of complex um, relationship to 
the word ethnicity or like heritage, cultural heritage. Um, and, you know, I think growing up in the U.S., um, I grew up in a place that wasn't very like openly diverse or like um, it, it, there's so much emphasis placed on assimilation that I think um, a lot of like the relationship to diaspora growing up was lost for me and it's something that I um, understood better as an adult. Thanks, Anna. And uh, I am first generation born uh, daughter of immigrants from India. Um, my parents immigrated to this country in the late 70s um, and uh, actually landed in New York where my dad continued his studies, um, but ended up settling in Owensboro, Kentucky, which is a very small town on the border of Indiana and Kentucky, for those of you who are familiar with the middle of the United States. Um, and uh, that was a pretty conservative and white space to grow up in. And my family is Hindu and most of the community that we were surrounded by were Christian. So there were a lot of kind of interesting ways I understood myself growing up in the United States, both as an American born citizen, but also as a person that was, had a very entrenched identity as an Indian person through via my parents and the Indian community that we had in, in the place that I grew up. I lived in Chicago, New York, and now I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And um, my a lot of my experience growing up here has been around this question of being American and how American am I? Um, there's a lot of interesting conversations that happen here on a pretty regular basis in my life around that questioning that identity, um, both people questioning me, but also me questioning it for myself. And so I will say the work I do outside of this curatorial practice, but but, but specifically the work I do with Anna is uh, an expression and an attempt and like, a real way for me to explore some of these ideas about who I am and how I understand myself um, as a United States citizen um, in this body and in this kind of like context. Um, so I am going to let Anna talk a little bit about our collaboration together, which has been ongoing for about seven or eight years. Um, so just give me a minute to switch to slides and I'll let Anna take it away. Um, so yeah, we have kind of always been working in this like more or less like experimental framework and um, just engaging with artists and um, you know, trying the framework of like trying things out. Um, and so an ongoing project that we did um, for many years was called Game Night, where we presented um, like programs or events uh, with artists made games. And each event had like a theme that united the game. So um, this is like an image of games about language. Um, we had like games about feminism, games about um, mysticism. And so there were kind of moments where um, artists who made games or, or had an already like participatory practice um, could present a work in progress or potentially, all, you know, already made projects. Um, and it was just kind of like drop in and, and we had all kinds of uh, different publics coming like people who were from like the game community but also like the art community um, and there were these kind of like fun but very engaging um, experiences uh, for many years um, and then we we kind of transitioned into thinking about how um, our kind of working relationship or, or like what our, how we could make work um, kind of related to our personal relationship as friends. 
um, just thinking about what what friendship means in our practice. And um, so through that, we we were kind of thinking about this connection to diaspora and like the very different ways that Sheetal and I both kind of experienced diaspora um, and what that looks like for us, like from our from our various experiences and then what those intersections actually are. Um, and so we started kind of like brainstorming around this idea of um, diaspora as something that is kind of in progress. It's like something that's evolving and um, changing. Uh, it's something that is kind of looking in on itself, but also always different for the person um, experiencing it and those coming together in diaspora. Um, so we thought it would be interesting to to create a project or, or you know kind of talk with artists um, who have diasporic experiences or make work about um, diaspora to think about like what how could how could this notion of like intersectionality materialize um, and how could it be represented beyond just like making an art work like a, a physical object um but kind of like relaying a process so um we thought about this connection between like intersectionality and interdisciplinarity um so the ways that immigrants or like the, the diaspora is always kind of like piecing things together they're becoming resourceful they're finding ways to um, kind of survive or thrive by um, doing things completely unconventionally um, or, and creating new networks and creating new relationships. Um, and so we kind of brought this prompt to the artists um, to ask them to think about like how could they potentially collaborate with people who are, have like, who work or who make work or who are who are uh, practitioners but are not necessarily artists. Um, and how can they kind of represent that? And so what what came together was this project Progressive Diasporas, which has like many arms and it's very much like this was the first iteration and um, hopefully we'll be able to do more where um, the artists uh, Umber Majid and Adobo Fish Sauce, which is a, collab a collaborative duo, um, worked with people like their families, um, family members, but also uh, like Umber worked with a um, graphic designer um, to, to think about this process of collaboration and interdisciplinarity um, and represent that their collaboration at different stages in the process. Um, so the artist kind of privately did some work connecting with their collaborators. And then um, they we had some public programs in the end where we kind of shared the, the work that came out of that or the ideas that evolved. Um, and so this is an image from our kind of space at EFA project space in New York where um, the artist kind of had a site to show to share their work and so they ended up making installations um, and we also shared resources like she and I shared resources that kind of informed our research um, and we use this space as like a gathering space um, yes yeah. do you want to say anything else today Uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, this idea of intersectionality as Anna was, des was describing like this project as being uh, about process. I think even in, it's important, I think it's important to, to, to note that we started talking about this at the end of 2018, 2019. And mm -hmm. the original scope for this project was much bigger. We were thinking about working with four different artists, having them invite collaborators in and doing something 
kind of much bigger, to be honest. But the pandemic really changed um, the the way we needed to reframe the project in order to think about its viability. And I think that process led us to a much more intimate project and led us to uh, this particular iteration of the project, which was a lot in a lot of ways shaped by our conversations and the interests of the artists themselves. So the installations that we'll show images of were very much coming out of the artist impetus to, to develop this in response to the questions that we were asking them. And the programming that Anna mentioned that she'll talk about a little bit more also was about this idea of process that the experience of diaspora is not a static one. And our programs, I think, offered spaces for people to actually engage with us around their own stories and ideas and experiences. And for us to kind of uh, express something that's been really important to Anna and I in our personal relationship, which is the ability for us to relate to each other, find the spaces in our unique diaspora, like experiences of diaspora as connecting points between us and find ways of providing mutual support to each other personally and in, and in this context of this project, creatively. And I think in a lot of ways, this, we all, for those of you who have experiences, like a life experience around being part of more than one culture, you realize that it can be really challenging, but I think a lot about, a lot of, of what's in this project is also about the work of imagination and celebration and the joy of having such a unique experience in the place that you are and being able to find other people that can like find touch points with you that make you feel like you belong somewhere or that you can feel aligned with something even though a lot of what you are isn't necessarily identified with the place that you're in. Um, Anna, do you want me to talk a little bit about the artist? Yeah. Um, good. Um, so um, as Anna said, we worked with a collective, Adobo Fish Sauce, which is Ricky Org and Phoebo Anthony. And I met the two of them at the tail end of a residency we both were a part of. And um, Ricky and Anthony are uh, poets, cooks, uh, you know, they do a lot of things in their own creative practices, but they've come together around this notion of food and sharing as a space for thinking about what we would call diasporas. And uh, Ricky is Cambodian American. Um, Fibo is Puerto Rican. His family is from Puerto Rico, but he was raised here. And they do a range of performative, like food-based work um, that in that kind of incorporates uh, their poetic and prose work, um, talking about this experience of connecting through food, celebrating through food, and exploring the complex experiences of their individual and collective um, experience in their worlds as children and, and part of families of with immigrant diasporas. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna read just from their website, how they describe themselves, because I think it really speaks to the work they did for this project. Um, Adobo fish sauce is an active choice to celebrate in the face of bitterness. It is responding to go back to where you come from by bringing where they come from right to you. The duo fuses spoken word, cooking, intentionality, vulnerability, and joy to create a one-of-a-kind experience that can't be found in any kitchen or any mic. Um, so this is the two of them being joyful in the installation space. Um, their work for us encompassed both of them working very closely with family members and creating um, videos um, that you can see in the background here of this image. And their installation space was really trying to recreate uh, like a space of comfort and familiarity. So the installation included a lot of elements that Anna will talk about in more detail. Um, but it also invited participants to become part of the installation through some Polaroid photography, which we'll show pictures of soon. Um, and they also made a zine. Um, so they did a lot of 
they made a lot of different components for the project outside of their performances that invited people who came into the space, even when they weren't there, to engage with this with the environment that they created. Um, Umber Majid is a, a interdisciplinary artist. Um, Umber works across multiple media, which, as you can see, this is an image of the of her doing her performance lecture in the installation she created. So even from this image, you can see she works in sculpture, she works in photography, she does a lot of work in the digital space and image manipulation, creation, and I know she's been working in other kinds of digital spaces recently as well. Her work really is bringing together archive, material, ideation, and this idea of a kind of futurism I don't know if she would describe it that way, but it's very present in a lot of the work she does that she's thinking about the past as a conduit to the future. And a lot of her work brings a lot of dis what seem to be like dispersed ideas together in, in an imaginative narrative through objects and video. For uh, progressive diasporas, Umber had a solo exhibition up at Pioneer Works, which is a space in Brooklyn, concurrently with this project. And so the work she did in, um, for us was very much um, an expansion, extension, and like different experimentations with a larger project that she calls Trans Pakistan. And she's been exploring in a lot of different ways through her work. Um, and, uh, uh, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Umber uh, was born in the United States, but also uh, received her undergraduate education in Lahore, Pakistan, and her family is from there. And so she has spent a lot of her life living between the United States and Pakistan, um, both in like developmental years in and through her educational experience. So her experience of Kind of diaspora and living here is quite different from mine and Anna's and also from Ricky and Phoebe's in terms of uh, her relationship to the United States um, and her identity. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Anna to talk a little bit more about some of the installation elements. So um, yeah, their project kind of came together or were like publicly presented um, through these installations that they created. And so um, Umber worked with a, uh, so her collaboration was um, primarily with a graphic designer from Queens who is like a self-taught um, graphic designer and makes um, all types of uh, work for, primarily like the Pakistani um, community in Queens um, for like businesses and things like that. And so um, she is someone who collects like a ton of imagery at all times. And so she kind of worked with this designer um, to his, his um, business is called Graphics World. And um, they kind of made all sorts of like uh, designs that she then turned into like ephemera so she made this amazing kind of like photo backdrop that people took um, cool pictures in front of them um, that is kind of uh, ironing together a lot of plastic bags from uh, New York City but also from Pakistan and other places um, and using like found materials um, she created um, this space that is um, referential to her video work that we'll show a clip of later. Um, so she was exploring this, um, she's, she's done like a, a long series of works around her um, uncle's uh, former travel agency that was created for um, the Pakistani diaspora to, to travel back to Pakistan, but also just for to like facilitate tourism to Pakistan. And that ended essentially after um, September 11th um, with like the war and um, Islamophobia in the West. Um, so the was kind of thinking about all these ideas of like the relationship to land, to like defining home through this kind of like aspirational, like almost imagined space. Um, and also the language of like marketing and um, like travel, tourism, 
Um, and then by extension, like real estate. So um, she's also done work kind of examining this uh, like luxury housing um, suburban complex in Lahore called Bahria Town. Um, and so she's made all kinds of ephemera, like little mints um, that you might get, like if you go to tour like an apartment in an apartment complex, maybe you would, the agency would give you like a little takeaway, like like a mint box. And so she made mints with um, different designs that she developed for this project um, printed on them. Uh, she made postcards. Um, so there are all these kind of like things that people could take away from her exhibit. Um, and so she kind of thought of it as like a kiosk or like a like a booth at a fair or something like that. Um, and then Adobo Fish Sauce um, did a, a lot of like layered uh, collaborations in their process, um, but primarily they had conversations with their um, family members and um, people in their community who, and, and it was um, just to kind of learn about their relationship to home and um, this concept of arrival. So um, it was really beautiful because um, they focused a lot on intergenerational um, conversations. And so they had this project as an opportunity to connect to like elders in their family um, and in their close like personal circles um, to talk about things that maybe were never discussed, you know, just like their their stories of arrival, like these things that, you know, are just kind of like spoken about but aren't detailed. Um, and so they captured those um, moments and those conversations in, in various um, small and intimate ways. Um, one of them was creating um, these these videos that you see these two people looking at. So on one side was like Ricky's conversations and on the other, on the right is um, Phoebe's conversations. And so then they made kind of like videos of them cooking with voiceovers of their conversations. Um, and then they also wrote poetry um, in response to these and kind of as a way to document the discussion. So they didn't actually like record Fully all of the all of the conversations they recorded them through poetry that was like translated into the voiceover for these cooking videos um, and um, yeah then they also made this like really nice like installation using like I guess maybe people here can relate to this kind of like immigrant vernacular of like the living room with um, just all kinds of like mismatched frames, like photos in different types of frames that are like random and also purposefully not um, balanced or not straightened. So they're, the, the frames are kind of like off center a little bit, just to think about like what their home foot photography like spaces were you know and I feel like I also had that in my home growing up just like a bunch of random pictures with like randomly like never straightened or anything <laughs> um and so they brought this kind of like space of coziness and intimacy um into their installation and and like really thinking about just like also going back to their like very intimate relationship with collaborators they're like best friends they talk about each other as like best friends um and um this very like sweet and kind of cute uh space that they created um yeah so this is like another view you could kind of like listen to the videos like watch the videos of cooking um Bebo filmed himself cooking with his mom um they had these like polaroid cameras and so you know everyone was like taking selfies in front of umber's backdrop and it had this like nice 
connection, we kind of created this like homey space, this like fun hangout zone. <laughs> um, and so there's like a photo of um, Umber, Ricky and Sibo together and, and other visitors to our space. And then um, they also created a zine um, that kind of had some of the prompts that guided them through their um, process, uh, just kind of like these very um, small, intimate like prompts, uh, these like kind of fun games, like list all that is kin, but not blood, but they also had like a word search in. And so um, those were kind of like spread around just like little fun takeaways. And um, finally, like in the center of the space, uh, Shito and I set up a kind of resource, like a reading resource area with some books um, and that kind of like represented diaspora just like had questions of diaspora that we think about in them. Um, not necessarily academic books, but um, more just like uh, literature that informs those ideas for us. Yeah, we invited the artists to make contributions to this reading space as well. So uh, these are, I think one of these books, the Umber actually um, mm -hmm. brought to the space. Um, and as Anna said, they, like not all academic and some of them spoke to the way we developed this project in general like books and texts that me and Anna had a relationship to prior to to this project manifesting um let me see Anna do you uh um, want to talk a little bit about our programs yeah so we had um another kind of element so like just to, we're kind of sharing this in so much detail because um, this project, this like progressive diaspora is like really like a series of events. Um, and so we, we wanted to like highlight that by having like little moments, like distinct um, different ways to connect to this theme. So um, we had a, Sheetal and I led a workshop um, called Bring Your Own Diasporas where, um, we wanted to invite people to kind of share their experiences of diaspora and intersectionality, um, but in a more kind of like personal, like intimate storytelling way. So we asked um, participants who came to bring an object that represented um, intersectionality or, or their relationship to diaspora. Um, and so what happened was like this beautiful kind of object sharing session um, where, you know, people brought like these beautiful, uh, very personal um, pieces and, you know, some uh, one person um, in the lower right, I forget exactly where she was from, from Central Asia, um, and she kind of had this like important connection to like drinking tea with her grandparents. Um, and so she brought this like tea cup. Um, we had uh, another participant from Hong Kong who brought all kinds of um, ephemera that she would just kind of gather during her visits um, around like the protests and the activism in, in Hong Kong. We had someone from Armenia who was making um, actual artwork around um, textiles and like lace um, I brought a cookbook from like a, like a silly cookbook from my life growing up. Um, and so we had these like very um, casual, it was like a very nice casual environment um, of conversation, um, but we all, it, it, it kind of um, brought us back to the original kind of connection that Sheetal and I had where we all came from like very different places and we weren't really talking about our like specific like ethnic cultural experiences but more about how we navigate um these these moments of diaspora in the context of our specific cultures if that makes sense so it was a nice way to kind of like extrapolate and go beyond um and and talk about these like very complex 
um, and diverse like moments. Yeah, I, I also think that event particularly that was we had an open house <laughs> when the when the installation mm -hmm. opened, people could walk through. But for this particular event, it felt really felt like it was important for Anna and I to offer a, the kind of experience that we were exploring in the work itself. And so what Anna described is, you know, a, an exploration of diaspora in a lot of ways, but also just inviting people to come together and be together in that experience, no matter how diverse it was. And, uh, you know, we talked about some like bigger ideas, but we also were just able to share stories, which I think a lot of people, again, can relate to that as part of the experience of like living between spaces of like, you telling people stories is a way for them to get to know you because these stories are from outside of like the context that you are, they might be familiar with. So it was really, it was a really nice event in the sense that we were able to move outside of like curator, artist, like that space and into a space of just being people who were sharing stories with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we're going to show excerpts from the artist's um, video perform video projects that were shown at the end of like kind of as like a culminating event in this project. And then we're actually going to uh, turn over the rest of this time to have a conversation with you all. Um, and we'll share like some prompts and questions for a conversation. Um, but we wanted to show these clips. Um, to kind of illustrate further and, and like maybe um, get get the conversation going. Um, so we'll show a clip from, first I'll, I'll show a clip from Adobo Fish Sauces um, project where they basically did like a cooking and poetry performance. So they were cooking and reciting poetry kind of performatively at the same time. Um, as a way to kind of like punctuate uh, what they were, their actions. And this clip is them talking about um, the farmer's market as like an intersectional place in a lot of ways. So like the farmer's market as like a place for all and, and like a universal space, but that's like not pretentious and is like totally removed from words like art or like creative practice, but is actually like a very important um, cultural site um, and so they're kind of imagining like what would if they had their own like imaginary farmer's market what would it look like um, so I'm going to share my screen and play that oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do sound At the adobo fish sauce farmer's market, my grandmother, in a voice just above a prayer, shares her recipe for feeding her seven children. A Cambodian shuttlecock teaches a men of a circle about flight. There's a section to get your hair done, a trim or a shape up if you need it. Just follow the sound of the buzzers in tune with the salsa music. It is located just far enough so that the hair and food don't mix, but close enough for culture and community do. At this adobo fish sauce farmer's market, there's a crab apple tree growing here. Mm. They get picked on by aunties who bring their mark basket bags, ready to make it full with the stem leaves poking out of the plastic. It's, it's a, a parking lot, lot harvest. harvest. It's a haul. That's just a little taste of, the, of that. So um, maybe if we have time, play more. And then um, I'm going to share a clip from uh, Umber's video. So Umber did like a lecture performance and this is um, part of the video that was like incorporated into it. Um, and here she's, she's talked about a lot of things in the video. The video is called Long Live Trans Pakistan. Um, but she's using um, like found footage from 
uh, or like her footage that she took um, while visiting like various like suburban residential uh, like construction sites in Lahore. Um, and so she's, there's this clip where she's talking about um, the diaspora as like a commodity um, in relationship to luxury real estate and um, tours, the tourism industry. Behia exclaims, let us all rest at Doheed Square, a site to display a nostalgic modernity for a return migration and perpetual travel motion. The tension between older forms of national struggle and politics are reenacted around individual aspiration. Diasporic capital and bodies are attuned to individual aspiration. In the namesake of the homeland that no longer exists, homeland is in the eyes of dunya. Take a chance on alienation and lay bare onto a world within its frontiers. Okay. So those are just kind of small excerpts of um, things that we presented as, as like a culmination to this project, um, the artist video works and, and kind of like performative works. Thanks, Anna. Um, so we want to invite Han Lu to join us for kind of the second part of, of this kind of time together for um, kind of kick off a dialogue about kind of the role that intersectionality plays uh, in our work, in our lives. Anna and I have talked about that a little bit um, in, in sharing our biographies and how we got to this work. But um, I would love to invite Han Lu to talk about that a little bit too. And um, then we'll open it up to this group if anybody wants to share some reflections they might have around that in their own work and life. Thank you. Thank you, Shito and Anna for the brilliant presentation. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of layers of uh, intersections in the work you just presented. Like I, I mentioned before that the intersection of like uh, the relationship between friendship and working relationship between you two, but also from the works of the two artists you presented, I see a lot of in, like different kinds of intersection. Um, the work by Adobo Fish Sauces, um, like to integrate uh, taste, smell, uh, but also sound, as I realized when I saw the video you, you show, like the sound when you cook, also the sound of like kitchenaries, that is something like kind of uh, give me like goosebumps because the 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 sound of kitchenery like uh uh like clashing into each other and like the cooking sound is something that really belongs to household and has a very homey uh, memory to each one of us. So yeah, that 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 was very touching for me. But um, speaking of intersectionality, you asked what uh, intersectionality means for, for each one of us. I mean, um, our participants can answer later, but um, for me, um, like I, I can only uh, talk about it in, in terms of my own work. Um, like I, uh, so I now, now now I'm in China and I work kind of in the Chinese social context, and it's a very specific one. And um, often I found a very kind of a huge gap between what's relevant in contemporary art and what's relevant in the everyday life experience for everyone who's not in the arts. So for me, like bridging that gap is intersectionality. 
I really like what uh, Anna you said uh, in your uh, biography presenting art in a non art context. That's uh, that I think is like a very uh, intersectional no uh, work. So one of the focuses in my practice recent years is to bring the discussion about um, urban rural uh, mo mobility in, in contemporary art, because I feel that while uh, obviously the art world talks about migration and diaspora a lot, which is a good thing, but in, uh, in the Chinese context, uh, the internal migration, especially the very uh, kind of an unequal condition of migrant workers is very invisible in arts. Um, these people are the foundation of the functioning of all the big cities in China, like Beijing and Shanghai, but um, Beijing and Shanghai are also contemporary art centers, but we seldomly see discussion about that kind of migration in, in the artworks. Normally, they uh, we talk about a lot about transnational um, uh, migration. So my uh, recent projects would focus on that topic. For example, um, I worked with the uh, ethnic minority migrant workers opera group to uh, to put together a performance by them to tell their stories in the uh, in, in the factory. And uh, we also worked with the uh, anthropo anthropology department of a university. Uh, we joined them in their students' field trip kind of uh, and uh, invite artists to join together to kind of create a mini artist residency to work with the students and the local villagers because uh, they are usually done that in rural villages to make something together. So this is uh, the intersectionality I really want to achieve um, in my work, uh, working with people from different social uh, class or, or uh, disciplinary backgrounds uh yeah to kind of bring the discussion of in internal migration to to contemporary art yeah thank that's you so awesome yeah go ahead anna yeah no that's just that's amazing and like yeah it's like these kinds of conversations you're right Hanlu, are, are really oftentimes invisible um i think a lot of times we think about art as like in its own zone or it's like in its own world as opposed to art is just like a part of life in in every way and that you know artists are not separated from other experiences um and the an artistic or a creative practice is not only does not only belong to someone who might call themselves an artist or who has studied art and so I think a lot of the experience or a lot of the projects you're talking about are like bringing that to light, like the creative potential or like the critical potential to like reflect on everyone's um, ability to be, to think critically and to communicate um, creatively in a way that is relevant to like the world as opposed to like something that's just like a, a beautiful, like universal, you know, like something that might feel very surface level it's like actually very specific yeah so. i mean yeah uh han lu i like that you brought up some of your like bigger intentions around the work um it made me think a lot about something anna and i've talked about and something that is related to this project for me but also like a lot of the other work i do i think a lot about the relationship between capitalism and colonialism and and like um dispersion of diasporas and separation of like minority and marginalized groups as a way to like maintain like a hierarchical structure of power right within like a capitalist structure whether it's economic or social and although like no one project can like move us out of that space i do think there's like a lot of value in thinking about how finding places that we connect with each other can be like a starting point for places of agency and power and maybe change down the road. But that first step of like moving beyond structure, moving beyond social and economic and political structures that intentionally keep 
like minority groups separate and in competition with each other, like that nature of that is very oppressive to all of us. And so part of this, like, let's have a relationship, let's talk, let's share is about getting to a place where we can maybe have some shared values or some shared goals or some shared like ways of thinking about how to reclaim like power, resources, all the things that have been taken from different groups of people over long periods of time and even still today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder, I, it would, oh, sorry. Let's go, what were you gonna say, Anna? I was gonna say if we should like open it up and see if anyone else has responses to these ideas or questions. 